Hello, hello. hello. We were watching a video before we came in and we shouldn't have watched it because we're going to turn that show into the show. <laughs> we are talking about 10 ways to save your grocery bill in 2024. These are easy grocery saving tips that will help you save money, get out of debt, even when your grocery prices have gone up. Now, I totally freaked out today when I went to the grocery store and saw my son's deodorant went from $2.50 a year and a half ago to $7.00. I was like, yeah, I ain't doing that. Now, I did make a mistake because it was in the same place it had always been, but they had replaced it with a more expensive deodorant, which it was just repackaged with a different name and fragrance. But still, I was like, okay, we are changing deodorants now. So these are some tips to help you. Do you have deodorant recipes? Save money. Yeah, baking soda. <laughs> there you go. Use some baking soda and water. It works really good, actually. Actually, you guys need to be trying that. Why are we spending money on deodorant when you could use baking soda? I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm serious. We're going to try that experiment. How many of you guys type one? If you want Ma Mike to try the baking soda deodorant experience experiment let me see let me see i should just stop wearing deodorant and see how you like that oh man i know but we should try the baking soda to see it might do something it might do something see everybody Is wants you to your try it tips? this everybody wants you to try it it's going to be bonus it's a bonus now so <laughs> all right here we go all i gotta say is everybody have to come smell me that voted for it <laughs> Okay, here we go. First tip is to cut up your chicken into smaller pieces. Now, this, I saved $4 over buying this already pre-cut. It took me less than five minutes. Oh, you need to take off the lower half, lower third. And um, it took me less than five minutes to cut this up. And I had $18 in savings over $8.22 buying it at the regular price. Instead of being $6.18, I paid $2.87 for five minutes worth of work. I saved $18, which if you added that up over an hour, over an hour is, let's see, five minutes. Holy cow, that's a really good, what's, that's like what? $200 an hour or something. I don't know. That's really crazy good pay if you were to pay yourself that. So I cut it up and people always say, well, how do I cook for one or two? Buy the big packs of chicken and, and drumsticks. This is how I do it now. Then just cut them up into pieces and put them in baggies and freeze them. And I go ahead and just pre-season them, put them in the baggie with all the seasonings and everything, they're already ready to go. Then I just pull it out of the freezer, throw it in the pan. Defro I don't even defrost it. You can defrost it if you want. Defrost it as it's cooking. And I've got dinner ready. And that is tip number one. The next tip is buy chicken quarters and pieces of chicken, pieces of meat that other people don't normally want. So chicken quarters are around 87 cents a pound now here, not on sale. And, um, and, um, they are pieces that people don't really want to eat, but here's what I do. I didn't have any chicken thighs on hand. These are chicken quarters. Same thing. These are the thigh. This is the drumstick. They're just still hooked together. Oven, 225, chicken in a pan. You can grease it if you want. Sprink and season, sprinkle seasoned salt on top. And we're gonna slow roast this all day long. Then the chicken is gonna fall off the bone. We're gonna eat it like this for one meal. And then if you're single, you're gonna eat this for one meal. Then you can pick it off the bone if you want for other meals. So that is the second tip is to use pieces of chicken. Listen, chicken thighs and drumsticks are very good. They taste great. And they're cheap because people don't want to deal with the bones. I don't know why people don't want to deal with the bones, but they don't. And 
you need to take advantage of that because it will save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on your grocery bill every single year just by that one tip alone. Now, guys, these tips are in our Dining on a Dime cookbooks that are on sale right now, up to 50% off for our eBooks and 35% off on our print books. Start with volume one, volume two. If you already have volume one, they go together, but they're totally different recipes. We also have our gluten-free, dairy-free edition right here. Oh, and our undated planners for 400 pages, 366 days undated. So you don't miss any days at all. Donna says, I will buy 10 pound bags of, of late quarters on sale and put three or four of them in the freezer. Yes, exactly. You guys can get the link for our cookbook sale in the description below or in the comment section. All right, the next tip is, do unconventional meals. So here I took potatoes. It's okay. I took potatoes and wrapped, uh, not wrapped, uh, spread baking grease all over the potatoes. Then I took and added my sea salt on there and I wrapped them in foil and I put them in the oven to roast for about two hours that day because uh, I had a little bit of time, but you could do an hour for 400, 425 and have vegetarian meals, meatless meals, however you want it. If you need a list of meatless meals, check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook right here. People always say, Tara, I need menu ideas. Guys, right here, our Dining on a Dime cookbook. It is on page, it starts on page 11, okay, right there. Starts on page 11, and we have one, two, three, four, five pages of menus. And right there's our meatless Each little page block is one, one, is one menu. So I think yeah. I've got like, I don't know, 100 or something in here that uh, mom and I made up four menus. We also on our website, livingonadime.com, have tons of menus for you guys to get ideas for dinners. But not eating meat two or three times a week is totally feasible. You could have a bean chili and put that on top of your potatoes. You could do a broccoli with cheese, ham and cheese, bacon. Any of those things would be great on your potatoes for a meatless meal. The next one is I don't throw anything away. Now, somebody had left the bag of bread open, and so I took and crushed it up, took and broke it into all kinds of different little pieces, and then I made croutons out of them. This recipe is in our Dining on a Dime cookbook, volume one, the red one right there. It's also on our website, livingonadime.com, and I just broke them into pieces, got them all as uniform as I could, and then I put them on a cookie sheet, put my olive oil and my garlic powder, onion powder, and salt and whatever flavorings you want. And then I have no idea why I had a muffin tin in the oven, but I put them in the oven and roasted them for about 30 minutes. And when they came out, they were nice and toasty and delicious croutons. So stop wasting food when you think it goes bad. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Dried bread can be used lots of things. Bread pudding, bread um, crumbs. You could use it for French toast, any of those things. The next thing is to cook once and eat several meals. So here I have my pork roast right here. Now, the price is set $9.78, but I think if I remember right, I paid something like 50 cents or a dollar a pound for this. So it really was only like three or four dollars for this. And it would have been around four dollars or less, but it wasn't reflected on the tag, but that's what it was on the store thing. Um, I put this in my crock pot. Put on my seasoned salt, put the lid on my crock pot, have four pounds of slow cooked pork roast. And then I took that roast and I made it into green chili, 
I made into barbecue beef. We ate it just like it was for the first day. And the fourth day, I made it into garlic pork roast. All with one roast, less than $5 for um, the entire family to eat an entire meal. Yes, you can still in 2024 feed an entire family for $5 or less for dinner. Okay, the next one is go for those after holiday sales. Here is my Easter bunny that I got last year for 50 cents. I don't know. I ended up with, I don't know, 15 or so of them. <coughs> and it was 50 cents for one pound of chocolate. Guys, 50 cents for one pound of chocolate is really stinking good. It's $4 for the name brand chocolate chips for 12 ounces. So that's a really good deal. So here's what I did in the fall. I took the bunny and I chopped his little head up into pieces and I put him in my mini dip crock pot with a little bit of coconut oil just to thin it out a little bit more. And I had a caramel apple bar for everyone who was there. I melted some caramels, had the apples. I got several of these uh, candies and stuff on sale for um, my caramel apple bar. So I was able to not pay full price for it and still have something fun. But most of these influencers would probably have spent, I don't know, they probably would have spent $40 on that caramel apple bar. And I maybe spent, let's see, I got the apples. I did have to pay for the caramels. So three, yeah, I, I spent less than $10, probably about six to $7 for that whole thing. If you guys have questions, please put them in the comment section and Mike will get to them and send them to me and I will answer them at the end here. The next thing I do is I freeze foods when I find a good deal. I found these avocados for a for dollar. And so I picked up a lot of them. I think I got 40 of them if I remember right. I can't remember for sure, but it was somewhere around there. And I chopped them up with my lime juice and my salt and garlic powder, onion powder, and put them in baggies. And then I froze them. And for a year, I think we still have one left in there. And for a year, I had homemade guacamole for pennies compared to the regular guacamole. It costs me for what a normal person would spend $5 on a container of guacamole. For me, it was about a dollar. So that was... And you're just really good. A re I mean, that was a really good stinking, really stinking good deal. All right, guys, type one, if you freeze foods like guacamole, if you freeze untraditional foods, I'm curious how many people of you freeze, how many of you freeze stuff like that? Type one, if you do. Type two, if you think I'm totally out of my mind. Let's see who thinks I'm totally out of my mind. I'll <laughs> bet somebody does. What do you think? Out of your mind? Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people do. How would you vote, my love? Depends on the day. Oh, good answer. <laughs> okay. Oh, Debbie thinks I mean. I'm out of my mind. <laughs> so does Michelle. <laughs> but a lot of people do the same thing. Yeah, guys, that's one way we feed our family for $400. For a family of four, $100 a week for a family of four is how we do it. And that's why. Um, the next thing I do is I reuse things. So I had this really yummy pickle juice and I used it as a marinade instead of throwing it away. So I took my chicken and I poured it on top and let it sit for just a half an hour. And then I threw this chicken in the oven and let it roast. And it was super yummy. It was sweet and spicy and I absolutely loved it. But don't be throwing away stuff like your pickle juice, guys. You can use it as marinades. And it works really good to flavor your chicken and your roasts and, and um, your pork roasts. The next thing is stop throwing away food when it goes bad. Now, this is a picture here of frozen sour milk. And what I did was I froze the sour milk because I couldn't use it up in time before it got really bad. And... I put it in two tablespoon size ice cube trays. 
So then I know if I need a quarter of a cup for my banana bread, which is the best banana bread you'll ever eat in Dining on a Dime Volume 1. You can get the recipe at livingonadime.com. Oh, it is really good. Best banana bread you'll ever eat. I can thank my neighbor Robin for that recipe. And it uses a quarter of a cup of sour milk. So I know if I put two of those cubes in there, because four tablespoons is a quarter of a cup. So I know if I put two of those in there, then they will uh, just melt. I just melt them in the uh, measuring cup and put them in my banana bread and it's super yummy. So uh, somebody asked, doesn't the guacamole turn brown? No, it does not because it has lime juice in there. So it doesn't turn brown. All right. Now this next one, guys. Okay. This next one, I'm probably going to make a lot of people mad. I'm good at making people oh. mad. But You're this one that. is a bee in my little bonnet. And I am going to actually do a standalone video, I think, on this. <gasps> I don't know. I'll see. <laughs> but this next one is stop believing. Can you take off the lower third? Yes. Stop believing all of the memes you see on the Internet and making your grocery bill go up because of it. You're like, Tara, what do you mean? All right, this meme has been around forever. And it says, this is how much sugar you are eating. Now, look at all of these four spaghetti sauces. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of sugar. Man, I must be eating a lot of sugar. But look at this picture. The rayos on the bottom right there, the Rayos is, let me find my number here just a second. Uh, the Rayos is $6.88 and the Prego on the far end is $1. Okay. Now you are paying, how much times is that? Six times, seven times the amount? How do I do that? Is that six times the amount? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear what you were saying. If it's seven dollars and it's versus one dollar, that's six times the amount, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're paying six times the amount. And so let's look at this, guys, and walk, walk let me walk you through this. Okay, so you can see how much sugar supposedly these have right there. Okay, so there's the sugar right there. Now let's look at the nutrition facts. Here's the Prego. It has 12 grams of carbohydrate, but it has nine grams of sugar, four grams of added sugar. Now, for those of you who don't know, tomatoes are very sweet and already have natural sugars in them. Okay. So we're just going to go with the added sugars because lots of fruits and vegetables have natural sugars. So the Prego has four grams of added sugar. Now we look at the Rayo and it has, okay, oh yeah, right there. And if we look at the Rayo, it has zero grams of added sugar. Okay, you think, wow, that's a really good thing. The Rayo has zero added sugar. And if I'm eating that much more sugar, I should pay $6.88 instead of $1. That's what you should think, right? But... Let's go back and look at this just a moment. Now, the Rayo has, this is very interesting, seven grams of fat. But the Prego has zero fat. So in order to make up for the lack of sugar with the taste, they added extra fat to the Rayo. But here's the kicker. They're both a half a cup serving. The Rayo is 100 calories. The Prego is 70. <laughs> You're eating more calories to make up for the lack of sugar or because you have to have so much sugar, you're eating more calories in fat. Now, this is what I really want to show you though, guys. Okay, look at this picture. Now, can you make it half screen or something on here, Mike, for me, please? I don't know if you can do that. Half screen. Like but look at that. So it's half me and half them. Uh, look at the, okay, well, that'll work. 
sorry. <laughs> but I really want you to see this. And is this, this isn't showing up on the screen, right? This what? bottom part. This is kind of important to show here. Uh, I think it is for them, but I, hold on. Do you guys see the arrow and the little speaker sign on the video? Because it's kind of important. Hold on, oh, I have shoot. to wait for the ad to go by. Oh my goodness. <laughs> YouTube is such a, okay, like. there it is. Okay, I wanted to make sure, because this is really super important. Now, look at this picture. According to this, I got what looks, appears to be the same size jar, okay? This is supposedly how much sugar is in the Prego. Per, Prego, yeah, Prego. Now, you think, oh, Tara, that's a lot of sugar. Four grams of sugar is a lot. But guess how much four grams of sugar actually is? Less than one teaspoon. This is a full, four grams of sugar is, wait a minute, let me see, did I get my numbers right here? The Prego has... Okay, yeah, it is one teaspoon, excuse me. So four grams of sugar is exactly one teaspoon, that amount. Now, does that even come close to the same amount that that looks like in the picture? This is flat out false advertising. Flat out false advertising. And hold this for just a is moment Is that from here. an ad, that picture? This is a meme going around telling people that spaghetti sauce is so bad for you with sugar. So this is the same amount approximately as the Prego. And look, they're saying in the meme, this is how much is really in it. Okay, this is how much is really in it. <laughs> they're saying it has one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen teaspoons of sugar, and it actually has one. Is that in, are they doing like all the whole jar and you're doing serving? I don't know. But who eats an entire jar? It says, how much sugar well, are you eating? Nobody eats an entire jar of Prego. So you should assume that they're going by the serving. Yeah. You know, the number one thing, guys, is don't let memes be your determination of what facts are. <laughs> know your facts. I don't know, guys. This is absolutely crazy. And I know the four grams, the one teaspoon of added sugar is for a serving, but they're saying this is how much sugar you are eating. No one eats an entire jar of Prego in one setting, unless you're 450 pounds or 600 pounds or something. Nobody does that. So you need to do apples for apples. Wait, there's apples and spaghetti sauce? I mean, apples. <laughs> I know, just You need to you. compare apples to apples. It has nothing to do with the amount of processed food. It has nothing to do with what they're adding in the food. It has to do with how much food you're stuffing in your face. Ooh, shots fired. <laughs> but stop believing memes like this and using them as an excuse to pay more for your grocery bill, thinking you're eating healthy when you're not. One teaspoon of sugar on your spaghetti is not going to hurt you at all. One teaspoon is not going to hurt you at all. Even if you have a full cup, even if you have two servings of spaghetti sauce, which is a full cup, two teaspoons of sugar is not going to hurt you. It's the 10 ho-hos you just downed while watching a movie that's going to hurt you. <laughs> so stop believing memes like this and making it cause your grocery bill to go up. Guys, type one if you agree with me, type two if you don't. But I'm telling you, I'm right on this one.
I know I'm right. So you're I not know gonna change your mind to people. I'm not going to change my mind <laughs> one bit because I have mom and I have been preaching this. I've been preaching this for years before I even wrote our dining on a dime cookbook right here before I even wrote it. Thank you. Everyone doesn't think I'm crazy. They all agree with me because I'm right. I am right in this situation. You have to know the facts of what you're actually getting for prices and what you're actually getting me or what you're actually getting in the food. But no one wants to believe that. They want to blame the corporations. They want to blame this. They want to blame that. And the thing is, what's to blame is our society is so rich that we can buy whatever we want, despite what everybody is telling you. And that is what's causing the obesity, is we don't have to have self-control because we have so much money that we can buy whatever we want and eat whatever we want. Did you mention about the processed? Like people are always saying processed <coughs> food. The problem with processed food really is not that it's processed. It's that people eat a lot of it because it tastes good yeah. because it's processed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I know. <clears throat> and like Rebecca's, if you ate just a tiny amount of it, it wouldn't really hurt you. Rebecca says people quit taking responsibility for their own actions. Yeah. Exactly. Penelope says, when you add up all the sugar and everything you eat all day, it's more than you think. It's pretty much in all processed foods. You are missing the point. You, If you ate a balanced 1,500 to 2,000 calorie diet of what you're supposed to eat, what the average American is supposed to eat, 1,500 to 2,000 calories is what we're supposed to eat. If you ate that, you would still be fine. It has nothing to do with the amount of sugar that's in there. It has nothing to do with it. And it's just that most people eat too, eat too much food. And the thing on, well, most people that are overweight or unhealthy eat too much food. I mean, not, eat, not saying you can be unhealthy and not eat too much food, but most, that is a, a major cause. Um, uh, they, there is, there is in sodas, 39 grams of sugar, 10 teaspoons of sugar. So each soda you drink, let me take out the four tea, the four extra teaspoons. Is that all? It would be more than that. It's not. Drink your one or two sodas a day, but don't drink, just don't suck on soda all day long. It's when you're drinking five, 10, 15 sodas. It's when you're drinking 40 ounces instead of 12 ounces. But even two a day will still make you gain a lot of weight. That's 240 calories, it's 120 per, per can, right? For soda. I don't know. But stop eating so much food and your grocery bill will go down. Stop blaming everybody and everything except for your lack of self-control and your grocery bill will go down. That, unfortunately, is the big, is the big problem there. And so people take memes like this one here and they use it as an excuse to say, well, I'm going to spend $6.88 on, this, on the more expensive spaghetti because it's healthier. And it's not. It has more calories and more fat. And I'm not saying you need to do a low fat diet. Fat makes you satiated, makes you feel full. So it's good to have fat, but you're also going to have to be careful. Yeah. Somebody says, Kimberly says I'm hooked on sweet tea. Yeah. That's a lot of calories. That is a lot of calories. And, um, So, yeah, I mean, Tracy says, I love your channel, but sugar kills more people than fat. No, it does not. That is an incorrect statement. That is a lie. Excess sugar kills a lot of people. Well, she, she does go on to say. Yeah, you, I think you're trying to say if you keep your sugar inside 2000 calories, it's OK. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But don't make statements like that. Sugar kills more people than fat. That's the statement you made. That is not true. The excess 
amount of sugar is what keeps people fat. We have a lot of people with diabetic with diabetes on our channel and they keep asking me to diet, write a diabetic cookbook. Why? You don't need a diabetic cookbook. You need to stop stuffing your face. That's what it amounts to. And I know I'm going to get a lot of people unsubscribed, but that guys, you've got to get the truth and get it stuck in your head. So you can start making some permanent changes that are for the better instead of just blaming everybody and everything for all of your problems. All right. Now that I've just ticked everybody off, Belen says, love your show. I've been watching it for years. Do you think she's still watching? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tina and Casper, our neighbor in Wyoming here. Um, all right. If you guys have comments or questions, put them in the comment box and Mike will pull them and send them to me. Donna could add some essential oil to it for scent. Oh, what would you like to smell if I, if I added essential oil to your baking soda deodorant? Actually, I think we should try that. What? Your baking soda deodorant. You can try that. <laughs> no, seriously. It's, you always say we should try it. You do that. Well, I have to, I'm the one that has to smell you. <laughs> I'm the one that has to smell you. Well, that's ya. true. So I would be curious to see if it actually works. It might work. You're just using deodorant now. That's what baking soda is, is deodorant. I'm telling you, I think we should try it. Okay. Rebecca, in regards to, read, to wearing deodorant since going keto, a carnivore much less body odor. There you go. See, eat all meat and you won't have body odor. Uh, Brianna, I save teaspoons of veggies and meat in the freezer after dinner. That's very good. JT, purchase more tobato, more potatoes, plant veggie gardens. That does help if you like gardening. It can get very expensive though. If you just start a garden from scratch, it's not necessarily cheaper if you're doing a whole bunch of stuff. Grace Acre says, I need heavy duty antiperspirant. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, the guys can't wear antiperspirant because it makes their pits burn. So they get a really bad rash. Brianna makes soup and pizza out of leftovers. Very good. Marcy, I've been using baking soda deodorant for years now and it works. Green, Green Acres just went back to the countdown with two commercials. I am so sorry, oh, guys. I was actually left that comment in for Tara because I was going to tell you. I did some research on this yesterday and apparently... Uh, it's been happening for a number of years that some people have trouble with that. And apparently the issue is related to the, um, the software that you're, that a specific device is using. So like uh, I think iPads and Androids were some of the ones that were having problems and the things I saw. And at the time, I think if there's an update available for that software, it would probably solve that problem. So I, I might see if you might try to update that software. Cause a lot of people were saying, yeah, it's happening on my iPad, but it's not happening on my computer. That means it's not the stream, it's the device. So I just thought I'd mention that. So those of you struggling with that can maybe try to update that and see if it solves the problem for you. Connie says that she, you don't look too enthused about the deodorant idea. <laughs> Guys, type in one if you think Mike should do the deodorant and type in two if you don't. I'm just curious. Did we already see that one? I think we said that one, but I can't remember what, what you guys said. I'm curious to see. We should do that test for one day. <laughs> Let's see. No, your pit still smells smell fresh. So if we make it I to just, the show no, just, and your pit still smells fresh. I just think it's fresh. <laughs> everybody says we should. Laura's I, on your side. I just Laura's think on it's your side. I just think it's funny that you're like, I think we should all we should all do this and we should make Mike do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the kid that says, Hey Billy, jump off the roof with this sheet. It's it's gonna be awesome, really promise. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's baking soda for deodorant. It's not dropping off the roof. Okay, the next By the one. way, Billy, if you're out there, don't do that. It's a trick. Uh, Susan, I buy chicken portion and put it in marinade and freeze. Yep, I buy it when it's $1.99 on sale and we you don't eat chicken every week. Very good. Uh, Jennifer says tea tree oil, a body splash aftershave. Okay. I haven't tried that one, but I could see how that could work. Debbie doesn't like bones speaking for herself. Yeah. A lot of people don't, but let me tell you the price. I don't know if it's worth it. Laura says 89 cents is the sell price here for 
chicken quarters, I assume. You know, uh, actually, I don't like the bones, but when Tara started making them, I really liked the chicken. But if I'm if it's if I'm making it for myself, I might pick it all off the bones before I eat, just so I don't have to cut it off the bones as I go. So if you hate bones, that might be a, a way to deal with that. So here's how we could do the deodorant test. You could use the baking soda, and every hour I could go in and sniff and see mm -hmm. how bad it's smelling. And we're getting all this on camera, is what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> and then if you come up and say, dear, I smell dirty socks. Have you cleaned downstairs lately? I can say, nope, it's you after I wake up no, from passing out. it wouldn't be dirty out. socks. It would be like, it smells like some kind of oniony meat oh, thing going grief. on. Oh, good grief. That's your mother. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Onions, you and your onions. Tanya, I dry my bread out for stuffing, but when I use it, it is still too soft, not firm stuffing. Then just um, throw it in the toaster before you do it. Grace Acres, I like to buy reduced rotisserie chicken and have it various ways in several meals. Yep, that's a great deal. Christy, how long can troutons last? Oh my goodness, a really long time. Like, I don't know, several months. Edify because you're dehydrating it. So it can, it's, it would be the oil in there that goes rancid. So I would say probably at least three or four months, maybe six months. Edifying says people think they need hundreds of grams of protein a day and that it has to come from meat. They don't know actual nutrition. We all have the information in the world at our fingers. Yep. Catherine, do you have a bread pudding recipe? Yes, I do. Dining on a Dime Cookbook, volume one. It's 35% off right now. You can go to our website livingonadime.com to try it if you would like. Um, Next one. Julie, love it when you are building up savings. We get a bunch of lives. Yes. So we have, that's exactly what we're doing. We're not going to lie. <laughs> our, our family emergency that happened wiped out our savings account and it's going to be a good chunk more. And so what do we do for that? We do extra gigs, side hustles. We get <laughs> moving, start doing more work. So yes, that is exactly what happens. Donna, I love buying 10 pound bags of leg quarters on sales. We'll be three to four, put them in the freezer. Yes. Robin, I love the thighs. My partner baked, had baked leg quarters in the hospital and never went back to breast me. I remember when I could get leg quarters for 29 cents a pound, not that long ago. I've lived off them all my adult life. Good. Kimberly, her chocolate prices are about to skyrocket. Then you guys need to hit those after Easter sales when they're 75, 80, 90% off. Um, <clears throat> edifying, my family of nine eats dinner under $10 every night. By the way, we saw about your mom. I am so sorry about that. I live in Florida, not the land of super cheap groceries. Really? I hear a lot of Floridians say that it's really cheap down there. My teen boys are well over six feet. Yes, mine are all over six feet too. Wanda, if you have a life today, are you having one tomorrow? Yes, we are. Edifying Publix has hams for $1.49 through Saturday. That is a good deal. Connie, great idea in freezing the avocados for guacamole. Yes, it works really good. Grace Acres, do you think avocado would freeze without the other ingredients? You have to at least add the lime juice because that keeps it from turning brown. Uh, Rosa, didn't the chicken taste like pickles? No, it did not. Edifying, not out of your mind, but I saved my freezer space for big ticket items like meat. Yes, me too. Chrissy, is sour milk like buttermilk? Yes, it is. Although there is, a, there is a difference between sour milk and buttermilk, but I find the baking with either one is just fine. Um, sneakers, uh, you're not out of your mind, just unconventional. If you are, then most of us are nuts as well. There you go. That is great. Scissor tell, I just made a double recipe of our banana bread, one for eating and one for freezing. It is delicious. Thank you so much. So if the original recipe is in volume one, and then if you want the recipe with variations, there are two recipes that are uh, the same in the in volume two. That is because I didn't have room for the variations in volume one when we did the updated version in 2020 or whenever it was. So banana bread and the muffins have variations here. And the original recipes are here. Are these new glasses? Yes, I'm wearing glasses like it's 1985. 
<laughs> Mike's been laughing at my glasses because it reminds him of when we were first married. <laughs> she was wearing contacts mostly, but the glasses she had looked just like that. <laughs> They're going to be changing in about uh, seven or eight weeks. I'm going to be getting different glasses. found out I have a new, um, not really eye disorder. It's a syndrome. And so I'm going to be getting colored glasses. I'll explain more about it later. But anyway, yes. So these are to help with those. Um, Penelope, pasta sauce is delicious with no added sugar. It doesn't need it. Make your own sauce and skip the sugar. Actually, it's not. It is much better with sugar. And here's the thing. The sugar, that small amount of sugar cuts the acidity in the tomatoes. And so that's why they add it in the pasta is because the sugar supposedly, this is what they say. I don't know if this is true or not. I need to find out for a fact if this is true, but I've always heard that it cuts the acidity in the tomatoes. I may be wrong on that, but um, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to make sure I know my facts for sure before I say things, because I've been noticing a lot of YouTubers, especially, oh dear, I shouldn't have gone this route. Then stop. <laughs> <laughs> I am on a roll. You said I shouldn't have gone this route. <laughs> I have noticed a lot of YouTubers, especially prophecy type Bible teachers. And I'm not going to call out any names, but they are showing things about eclipses and oh, yeah. the food plants burning down and all this stuff. And I've actually emailed a few and called them out on it and said, Hey, this is actually not true. And they're like, well, we don't have time to verify all of our facts and all of the things our viewers send us. One the other day said, Oh, look at this. It's 6,666 days between the eclipses or something like that. Now I wasn't able to verify that, but one of my viewers sent this to me. No, stop doing that. That really upsets me because there are a lot of people who are new Christians and they trust seasoned Christians and they're throwing out facts that they haven't verified yet. Like with the food plants burning down, I called several of them out and to ask them about it. And they, their, their response to me was, well, we don't have time to check facts. And these are very prominent, big YouTubers, big names in the prophecy prophecy area. Now, I know people make mistakes and I get that, but I don't just take a meme like the one I just showed you at face value unless I verify it first. Most of the time, I, I'm not going to say I've never done it because I'm sure I've done it sometimes, but I'm trying to be super careful now to verify these things because the facts are people are not checking their facts and that's a fact. <laughs> well said. Ellen, people need to do, oh, well, here you go. People need to do their own research. Too many people think everything on the internet is gospel. Yeah. And especially when it comes to these prophecy uh, teachers, some of them have really good information and they are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're devaluing their good information by not checking these things and just putting this stuff out instead of just sticking with the Bible. Like some of this stuff with the eclipse, I don't know, guys, do you want me to do a video? Let me know. Type one if you want me to do a video on the eclipse because I'm like watching this stuff thinking, you people are out of your mind. <laughs> what is wrong? As a matter of fact, I was thinking about Thursday doing a video on the eclipse. I don't know. So anyway, you are. I was thinking about it because it's crazy. And a lot of these prophecy people are legitimate people. I know them. I have watched some of them for years and know that they are very biblically based most of the time. But they're getting, I think they're just getting tired and overwhelmed and they need to take a step back and slow down 
and stop sharing stuff that they have not verified. Well, I also think that they say crazy things and everybody goes, whoa, yeah, you're awesome. And so then they say more crazy things and they don't verify it. Well, that's because crazy gets views. I know. And I get that. But but like you said, if it's not true, yeah. Do you, is it worth being crazy yeah, for views? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Back to comments and questions. Let's see. What's everybody saying? Yes. Oh, everybody's going to see the eclipse. Very cool. We thought we might be able to be going through that area in Missouri at that time. I don't think we are now, but we, we thought we were going to go. And we thought, oh, we'll go see the eclipse. But no, we're not. I don't think we're going to be going now. But And it probably sounds like a good thing. One of our viewers, Mary. Hello, Mary. She... um is in Indianapolis. And she said they're expecting a million people. Wow. Really? I mean, eclipses are cool, but I, I don't know. It's worth for a minute to see the sun go behind say, in front of, having the seen a lot of them, go in front of the sun for a minute. I don't think I would spend thousands of dollars to travel somewhere else in the country, unless you want to go somewhere else in the country anyway. Ooh, sneaker says she lost a lot of weight by eating only two times a day or only when hungry. Very good. Yep. Amber, what are your thoughts on supplements? It's hard to know how much to invest in vitamins while on a budget and not buying into any fads. I know it's hard. I have spent, I'm probably getting close to $100,000 right now um, over the last uh, 20 years of trying to get my chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia under control. Now I have, I'm way better than I was, way better than I was. But I totally agree with you. I was trying to decide today if I should start a different supplement to try. And a lot of it is your diet, your sleep, and your stress. And so that's a lot of it. But yes, there are supplements that help. Go check my videos out. Type in chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia for a search. Um, and I, I have in there several uh, videos. Uh... Dan Danielle says, well, if you're trying to try to avoid heartburn, you can add a little bit of baking soda to your chili spaghetti and those types of acidic foods. Yep, that's very good. Yep. Um, Dining on a Dime cookbooks, guys, right here. Volume one, volume two, 35% off right now for our spring into savings sale. And we also have our gluten-free, dairy-free edition and our undated planners, 20% off, 400 pages, 366 days, so you don't lose any days at all. Start with the red volume first. That's, if you if you need to start anywhere, start with that one. Uh, Penn says, don't use any citrus oils for deodorant. Burning in a big way, that makes absolute sense. Mounting in the Badlands, calories are calories. If you consume more, then you have to expend more. Yep, you are right. Patty, I was able to lose 33 pounds by putting the sp spoon and fork down. I do not snack after snacks. I love snacks, but love seeing my grandchildren more. Plus, my blood pressure has dropped a lot. Very good. Very good. Kathy loves the research she we, I do for her. You're welcome. <laughs> the, here's the thing. I can't stand it when people lie. I hate lying. And so... That's why I try to, even exaggerating is lying. So I've been trying very hard not to do that. Now, sometimes I'll exaggerate just to be dramatic about something, not exaggerating for just making a point, but like to be funny or whatever. But um, when we're talking about doing, you know, actual facts and stuff, people need to stop just believing everything on the internet. My oh, goodness, actually, it's know, getting so ridiculous now. Well, what's really been a big problem, and it's really caused our culture to go down like crazy in the last 10 years, is uh, people suddenly think that you can make, you can learn what the truth is by how many people agree with it or how emotionally gripping it sounds. Like, those are not ways that you tell facts. Like, everybody used to agree that the earth was flat. <laughs> And even though a few people have gone back to that in recent years, <laughs> pretty much everyone knows that's not true. And so just because a lot of people are saying something doesn't mean that that should be your litmus test to find out if it's true. But feelings are the big one that everyone's like, well, what do you feel? I mean, you could just put a picture of something and, and tell people a story about what the picture is that's probably not even true. And they'll just go with it because they feel bad for the polar bear or that poor child who isn't 
real as AI generated, you know? And it just. Well, and a lot, like Pastor Jack said, he's having a big problem with people taking bits and pieces of his sermon and cutting them up and saying something totally different than he did and adding, making AI videos of him doing things that he wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really sad. Um, really sad. If you guys have comments or questions, put them in there. Michael, grab them and send them to me. Sandy says brown lentils are good substitutes for ground meat and homemade pasta sauces. That's a good idea. Yep. Tanya, Tara would know first thing if the de deodorant didn't work. <laughs> See? I'm sure oh, did I you would. say sit anymore? Yeah. Did I send you three already? Uh, or two? Two. You want me to send you a third one? Yeah. Bounty in the Badlands says 580 weight calves are selling for $4 a pound. Fall forecast is between five to six pound. If it holds, beef is going to be outrageous in the spring or fall. Wow. Yeah. That's going to be, that's going to be expensive. Well, and I went this morning to the grocery store. They had um, beef patties on sale and he said, well, they didn't come in. And I was like, all right, grocery store, get your act together. Linda, smaller portions on smaller plates and bowls. And I lost 40 pounds with ease in a few months. Very good. You know what? When we went to Europe to, uh, in 2019, I realized I was eating what? The, give me that bowl. I was eating food in bowls that were this size while we were over there, and I realized that that's the reason I lost a lot of weight while we were gone. Yeah. Because then I would later on forget that I was thinking I was still hungry. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, finding a way says really love the clutter video. I have to finish. It is still finish it still, but it was great. Yes. Finish it. Cause it was a really good video. Rosa. I just got 10 pound bag of fresh thighs, legs for five eighty. Very good. She put them in the freezer. Chris, I agree as well as MCTD, fibromyalgia, et cetera. I have diabetes from six years of steroids. I do agree with Tara and Susan portion control. I lost 25 pounds, 25 more to go. You go girl. That's great. Walking by faith. I need to buy your cookbooks. They are on sale right now if you would like them, 35% off. Jennifer, Safeway has hams at 79 cents starting tomorrow. That is a great deal. Thank you for letting everyone know that. Donise, I think chicken with bones or any meat with bones tastes better. Yes, I agree with you. Carol, I've tried the baking soda deodorant trick and don't recommend it. I ended up with a rash and dried chap skin in my pits. Worst two weeks ever. Ooh, I would only make Mike do it for like one day. <laughs> you should hire Mike to do it. What's your what's the payment? Oh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> you guys want to see Mike turn red? Right, <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow, that kind of payment will get a will get deodorant? Wow, okay. Yeah, I uh, didn't even know if it worked or not. <laughs> Poor Mike. Um, Olympia, husband won't eat supermarket chicken. Okay. Well, that's fine, I guess. He you wants to laugh at himself. You know what's funny about that? Does he eat chicken at restaurants? Because a lot yeah. of restaurants buy the chicken at the supermarket. And if they don't, they buy their restaurant, their stores buy the, or the restaurants buy the chicken from the same place that the stores buy the chicken from. So. Yeah. Tracy, what are your thoughts on the bridge collapse today? I think a boat hit a bridge and it collapsed. I mean, I don't know, guys. At this point in the game, you're going to be hearing about so many things, and who knows if it's actually a conspiracy or if it's actually real. I mean, I have to take their word that it lost power and it just whammed, rammed into there. But Well, I mean, realistically, if it was some sort of conspiracy... I think it would have happened in a way that was a lot more spectacular. I mean, yeah, the yeah. bridge fell, but they had notice to tell everybody or to stop people from going on the bridge. The people that 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 fell were workers on the bridge, so they weren't people drive. So they were able to prevent people from going on the bridge, like other drivers and stuff. And I just, I just think it was an accident. Hey, if you saw in I mean, that's a, what it if you saw the video like. where the ship is going, you can see that all the lights tripped off just like on Titanic. They went off and on a couple times and then they stayed off for like 20 or 30 seconds and then they came back on. So, yeah, I would say it was an accident. It was a terrible accident and you know, but it's still an accident. 
Um... Now, if, you know, a thousand bridges started having this problem all across the country, I might think, hmm, seems a little suspicious. Maybe we should look into that. But I still wouldn't be passing rumors that that's a problem. Well, it's like when they were... That, that's a conspiracy. Yeah, it's uh, like because... when the food plants were burning down. It's the same thing. Because the thing with the food plants, when we, we did a video on that for those of y'all who remember that story. But people kept saying, oh, the food plants are burning down. Oh, it's a conspiracy. Well, what we found out is every year there are certain fires in food plants. And and we, when they were saying that, there was one well, less we fire at, we than We looked at a list before. of the ones that the YouTubers <laughs> were saying all these food plants burned down. And we found out that only like one or two of them catastrophically burned to the ground. And like one had a small fire and an air conditioner on the attic that didn't spread to the rest of it. One of them had a plane crash in the field nearby. One so had they a were, plane crash in the parking lot. So there were things that really weren't what the YouTubers were say, or conspiracy people were saying they were. So that's what I'm saying is it's helpful to find. Like if, if somebody says, oh, here's the thing. And, and as evidence, here's a list of the ones. Take that list and go see. Go check for yourself. I took the list that's... and I checked for myself. One of them was a food pantry. And if they don't give you a list, then they're just making it up. A food pantry is not... A food processing plant. A food processing plant. And silos burst into flames all the time from the combustion, from the dust, and the heat that's in all the basically composting well, corn and stuff. Dust in the air is highly flammable. So if there's if there's a really dusty place, like there was a grain elevator in Wichita that exploded like 30 years ago mm -hmm. and it was the same thing just a whole lot of dust in there and, yeah. and there was a spark from an electrical thing and it just blew up i mean grain elevators are big concrete structures and it it just devastated it yeah um debbie says you're funny <laughs> thank you actually i do like your sense of humor thanks i'm glad so that's one thing you like about me. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's the only thing. No. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm here. Mwah. There. Does that make up for it? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Teresa says tomato sauce is added is added to reduce the acidity. Yes, I am right. I th I'm pretty sure that's a fact. I'm pretty sure. Because I remember that from high school home ec class. And back in the 80s, when you took home ec class, it was actually science class. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Do we match? We match so perfectly. Do we? We Oh, we're such a darling couple, she says, walking <laughs> by faith. Uh, yes, we do match Thank our you. clothes purposely. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, at least we try not to do him purple and me bright orange or something. But Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm going to have to divert you from your questions for a minute. Anne says, I think if it were a terrorist attack, they would have hit the Brooklyn Bridge or a much more populated bridge. Yeah. Or that same bridge three hours later. Yeah. That's the thing is, those are the kinds of logic points you need to be thinking. And uh, somebody at uh, Ingrid said, maybe may we all lift up prayers for the families that lost a loved one in the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Yes. It is, it's, it's some, those, there are people that I think probably, well, I don't know for sure that they died, but I assume that there are some people that died from that and others that were injured and definitely should be praying for them. Here's the thing. <clears> you <throat> just never know when you're going to go. Any fluke thing could happen. Like at school last year, a dad came to pick up his son from school and the son found him. He had had a heart attack in the car the last day of school. <clears throat> the bridge collapse. You could just have a random heart attack. You never know when you're going to go. That's why you need to know if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you don't need to worry about it. And as long as you have him as you've given your life to Christ, then you're good to go. And that's where you've got to have the confidence. And if you guys need a Bible, we give them for free. But that's where you need to have a confidence that I am definitely going to heaven. You can know 100% for sure you are going to heaven. I'll share the link for that. Uh, actually, I was also <laughs> going to mention, Tanya says the Bible says don't call everything a conspiracy. True. Amen, yes. sister. Yes. yes. But there are some things. Well, there are some things. That. But you have to. You have to know. Like when that thing going around happened, I was actually watching the numbers. And I was fascinated how the flu numbers, there was no flu the last half of that winter. Um, hmm. Let's see. The Spanish flu was this bad, but this one is this bad. Hmm. This isn't even close. 
So yes, uh, I was actually watching numbers and that's where you have to just check the facts for yourself. Um, Ingrid says, it's funny you bring that up about the eclipse because my husband is yelling at me, stop watching this on YouTube. It'll make you crazy. We need to trust God. Yeah. I mean, I'm watching the things on the YouTube just because our viewers are asking me about, and I'm like, what are they talking about? I'm like, seriously, people are saying this stuff. It's an eclipse. This is not the year 345 AD where we knew nothing about this stuff. My goodness. But it's cool to see one though. at the same well, time, God, the Bible does say that God gives us signs and wonders in the sky. So at the same time, there are things, but as Christians, we are not afraid and not worried about it. Why? Because if Jesus decides to come back next week, Hey, that's fine. I'm ready to go. So Tanya, um, if they don't have time to check the facts, then why are they posting on their channel? Yeah, I have a real big problem with this. I do have a problem because new Christians will go and watch these people. And then they come to me and they say, well, Tara, these people are saying this. And I'm like, okay, I don't, they're mostly good, but don't listen to that. Um, Grace Saker says the news and social media is nothing more than old tabloids we used to have. Yeah, that's true. Um, KB, when I was a kid, you hardly ever saw overweight person. Yes. That's because people ate at home. They ate three meals a day and they didn't snack. That's why. Um, Leslie, I found your 2005 version of Diane the Dime at the thrift store. She was thrilled. Yay. That's great. Oh, that was the, the big books are fun version. Yeah. <laughs> we sold, what was it? 125,000? No. Something like that. 250 yeah. of that one. It was two, wasn't it? I think 200. I, I can't, can't remember. remember. I think it was like 250 of that one. Um, Carol Ann, it's like Y2K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Olympia <laughs> says my oncologist recommended a vitamin, a multivitamin. Still haven't found one I like. I found one that a viewer recommended that I'm taking. And it does make me sick to my stomach if I don't take it with food. But otherwise, I think it's pretty good so far. But it's fairly expensive. So Tanya, my mom went to the doctor for a test. He said not to believe everything that Gould says about medical people read too much and worry. Yes and no. So I agree with her on that. But at the same time, doctors blow us off a lot too. I don't know how many doctors have just blown us off when there's actually something wrong. And so that's a double edged sword right there. Um, Rosa says, I still have my Y2K instruction book. <laughs> Probably going to be needing it the way things are going. CC's Garden. People need to understand logical fallacies and be able to identify them. Yep. Do your own research. Terry, it's overwhelming these days if you look at different perspectives on a story and then attempt to choose the most possible. Yeah. Lori's Thrive. Why is everyone supposed to buy water for the eclipse? I have a well. I know I'm, I'm not understanding all of that, but. Uh, Debbie says, we went to the biggest store outside of Syracuse, New York, 157, 153,000 square feet and 70,000 products. Oh, that's just ridiculous. I'll go to Aldi. Thank you. John, 59 cent chicken leg quarters at Piggly Wiggly. Susan, did you hear about the semi that hung off the Louisville Bridge? Louisville Bridge. Fireman <coughs> prayed with the driver and then he saved her. Wow. That's great. That's awesome. That, oh man, I saw the funniest thing when we were coming back and it totally shocked me. We were driving and I looked over at the semi next to me and then there was this girl driving the semi and I'm sure she was older than this, but she looked like she was 16 <laughs> driving the semi and I'm like, holy cow, that girl. And she was really tiny too. I'm like, how in the world is she driving the semi? Because they have to load and unload a lot of stuff. So I was like, wow. Um... You can put that in there. Um, okay. Diane, been wanting to thank you for the discussion about NADH a couple more, a couple months ago. It's made a huge difference in my energy levels. Yes. Very good. I am so glad. It does take about three months to really kick in, get into your system. This is what I was playing at. Kelly. Oh, Kelly. Hello. Thank you for calling today and giving me a little boost. I appreciate it. Oh. Um, Let's see, Kelly, we had sugar refinery explode a few years back in Georgia. Yep, it is just a risk. 
Jane, a doctor told me to use alcohol under my arms to reduce order when I could not use deodorant. Bacteria will cause it. Or yeah, that's basically what it is. It just keeps the bacteria from growing. Did you send me the next one? I sent you four. Oh, okay. I'm done with it. Um, walking by Faith, she wants us to kiss again. Oh, should we smooch? Mm. Okay. <laughs> It's funny is our daughter, she when she was little, I think, did she start that or did we start that and she copied it? Do she what? Go, mmm, oh, Ellie, yeah. <laughs> it was really cute. Know. Yeah, she was funny. Kimberly says, what doctor? You don't have to see the doctor anymore. You have to see the PA. I know. I don't even get me started on our medical system. I am so angry right now with our medical system that... I could just spit nails. I don't know how people with cancer and serious illnesses like that are, are even coping. They're not, I know they're not, but it's just, oh yeah. Uh, did you send me the next one? Um, There's only three. I mean, I can give you oh, okay. three here. Um, Hold on, I'll send you these three. Have sneaker says I have a friend who got the thing for the arm three times, even after warning her, not complaining of medical issues. Oh yeah. Don't even Questions get me started with that. Me. Even do not even get me started with that. Um, and sweet bark says, yay, come take me Jesus. Oh, yeah. I'm ready to go. Um, Emily also teens didn't sit on their butts all day gaming. Yep. That is true. Edifying says, what are the Bible translations you re recommend? I've forgotten. I was raised King James only I feel like a major rebel because I currently use new King James. <laughs> you must be Baptist. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's pretty funny. New that's King funny. James is perfectly fine. ESV. Those are those are the three that they say are the best translations. But here's the thing. If you're reading, as long as it's the Bible, not the Jehovah's Witness Bible, but as long as it's the regular Bible, then um, we're okay with the New Living Translation and NIV, Actually, that type of thing. But get something started reading. And then you can do your research later after you get in the habit of reading it to decide for yourself, but. Yeah, new living, we give out new living translation because it's easy to read. And the thing is people are like, oh, you have to only have old King James. Well, okay, so then people just don't read the Bible. Is that better? I don't think so. So I like new living translation, although there are some things I think uh, a word for word translation would be better. And cause it's a thought for thought translation. <clears throat> which is still legitimate. It's, uh, translation is where it's actually translated from the Bible. And then I uh, forgot what it's called. <laughs> I always forget. There's a one like uh, the message that's not a translation. It's somebody's opinion mm -hmm. or somebody's... Um, it's fine if you're reading it just like a impression. novel, but don't read it like a Bible. Uh, it's not a Bible. So you, so you want one that's a translation and not the New World Translation because that's, that's not a correct translation. Um, but... New Living Translation is easy to read. Um, uh, sorry, New King James, New American Standard uh, have are pretty good ones, ESV. Uh, but I've lately been a little bit disappointed with <clears throat> my, my New American Standard is a, I found out is a New American Standard in 1995 version where they kind of changed things to kind of, I don't know, it almost seems like they're being a little politically correct on it. So oh, which one? NASB 95. Oh. I don't know. I, there's, it's not real bad, but I think in more current ones, there's some concern about that. But it's interesting because uh, Tommy Alderman from Alderman Farms, for those of y'all who know him, he showed me a legacy study Bible the other day, which I think is um, it's, it's a variation of NASB that seems a lot better. And I've been looking at that lately, and I really like it. So... Um, but if you go to Bible Gateway, the translations that are there, as far as I, last time I looked, all the ones I saw uh, were ones that I think are good translations. So uh, mainly at the best translation is the one you'll actually read, which is why we send um, New Living Translations to people. For study, it'd be better to use one like uh, New King James, New American Standard, English Standard. Um, the Legacy Study Bible. And Old King James is okay. It's just that most people don't really understand that language very well. So 
if that's your problem and you never read it, you might as well read something else. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Sandy, over 3 million people do not have family doctors in Canada. I believe it. I We have lots of Canadians that are just telling us how awful it is. Marilyn, I have a very hard time concentrating, comprehending. I need an easy reader version. Yes, the New Living Translation, I have the same problem. That's why. Um, but, yeah. Uh, sneakers, is there such a thing as Satan's wrath? Was taught from a former religion that <clears throat> is the tribulation currently starting to read the Bible more. Tribulation is God's wrath. Satan is let loose to do whatever he wants basically on the earth during the tribulation but it's god's wrath being allowed satan's being allowed to do what he wants so that's probably what they're talking about um sweet barks and berries i have about a dozen translations and pick up the closest one when something crosses my mind and if i want more info i check out and compare versions yes it's it's easy to compare versions especially online now i do that all the time Oh, I totally forgot. Lana mentioned a uh, new international version, NIV, and it's got a bad rap with some critics uh, in recent years, but it's really still a great translation. Uh, and New Living Translation and NIV are both easy to read. And actually, NIV even has one that's designed for younger kids, the NIRV, which is a New Living Translation that's a little bit simpler in the way it was translated. So, yeah, those are good, too. I have a Dakes study Bible for 20 plus years, but I've never really learned to use it. I have no idea what that is. I've never heard of that one. Um, let me see here. There's something that I missed over here and I couldn't re couldn't find it went out of my way. Um, hmm. shoot. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, everybody's talking about the horror stories at the doctor. Oh, Kelly, I am so sorry. She went in for gallbladder surgery, and they just blurted out that she had cancer. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, a little bit more compassion would be nice. Hmm. Um, I have a study Bible from the ninth grade, says Kimberly. There you go. Yeah. Oh, hey, one other thing I would mention is um, if you, for those of you who are kind of curious about things, uh, Bible related things, and you see people online that, that are saying that they're discernment ministries, oh. I would not go there. That has gotten out of control. <laughs> These so, are nice, legitimate people who are biblically based, but they have gotten out of control. Well, I think some of them were had the right intention at the beginning, but I think largely those go off off the rails completely because the idea is it is useful to know it's better for you to know personally what correct doctrine is by reading the bible um, than to listen to people criticizing other people because what's happening now is the people a lot of those people they're just aggressively going after everyone in a hateful spiteful kind of way which is not what christ would have wanted and I was realizing some of them were, some of the things they're saying and thinking, you know, if Jesus was here today, you would be telling him he's wrong. And I don't know if you've read your Bible, but you know, in the Bible, there were people that told him he was wrong. And guess what he said to them? <laughs> he said, you know, you're telling people your thing and, and you're going to be, you're going to make them twice the son of hell that you are. So what I'm saying is that those discernment people, you have to be really careful with them. And I wouldn't really pay a lot of attention to that because they are, they're getting to be so aggressive that they're, a lot of them, they're just, it's like they're their own gods and they're, they're just taking, it's one thing to note that some people have a, it, it's good to recognize that certain people that claim to be pastors say a lot of things that are really off the rails and you know, wow. But if somebody has to go back and look through 40 or 50 years of people's recordings to try to find one phrase they ever said any time in their lives, it's a witch hunt and it's not right. And, and a lot of them are, are taking not, them out of context. And those people are not honoring God and they're being prideful. And um, I think rather than doing that, it, it might be useful to go to some places, I don't know, 
I used to say by or I used to say gut questions and kind of iffy on them now, but um, to to just to find out from a few highly respected places if if they have a comment on somebody. But in general, I would rather than looking at comments on individual pre preachers, I would just read your Bible more and learn the scripture for yourself. And you will be able to identify that without somebody telling you. Because in the same way, those YouTube, a lot of those YouTube people that call themselves discernment people, they may start with a good idea. You know, we, we want to make sure people know the truth. But eventually, it becomes about them and how superior they are. And like I said, a lot of them would tell Jesus he was wrong. <laughs> so keep that yeah. in mind. <laughs> Because that's been kind of really bothering yeah. me lately when I see some of those people. Well, because they're calling and I don't out, click on the video. Yeah. Because well, I, think, I have because I want to see what they're saying because people are asking us. But well, I also saw a video today that was recommended to me about another YouTuber. It was like, a, oh, look at this terrible thing that's happening to her, and, and her life is falling apart. And I was thinking, I'm not going to click that because I think it's well. First of all, I think it's a scam. But secondly, do you really want to relish in other people's misery if it was true? <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's getting to be really bad and they're taking it out of context or really really old things and that's another yeah. thing is that yeah sometimes they get on somebody for something they said eons ago and they've since retracted and said no i didn't i shouldn't have thought that or whatever but when you were young and stupid you probably said something you you wouldn't want people to be digging up and going after you for yeah. now well and i had one of those discerning things take a comment that i made on another youtuber's channel completely out of context and he featured my comment of course because my comment ended up getting to be the first one and it had like 500 comments <clears throat> on my comment and so he took mine well it was completely out of context so then my viewers were looking at me saying well tara this person is saying this about you and i'm like that's not the way i meant the comment and so I don't even comment a lot on videos now. I'll just email them personally if I'm going to say something because I don't want what I say taken out of context. Yeah. So I got enough of that going on as it is. So, well, we aren't called to be, I mean, it, it, we are called to recognize the truth and help other people to know what the truth is, but we're not called to pridefully go after people like vicious attack dogs who are on the same side as us. <laughs> That's the thing that I, I, it just baffles the mind. Uh, Fro's family says, good morning from over here. That's in Japan. Uh, God is still on the throne. He's almighty. He's powerful. He is not nervously wringing his hands, wondering what to do to next. And the devil is only a created being. And actually, this week, we're celebrating that the devil has already been defeated. Easter is about Christ overcoming sin and death and and saving us and part of that is the devil's he's been defeated already so even though he's still running around doing stuff he has no power ultimately so i Guys, think that's an a, amazing wonderful thing give us a thumbs up if you are liking these videos please it helps youtube know that you like our videos and it really helps us out a lot if you guys do that renee says i am a christian and my kids are not they were raised in the church. They're grown now and not saved. I am ready to go, but I know I won't see them again. How do you know that? I, how do I cope with this? First of all, you cope with this by remembering that the Bible says that we are to raise our children up, and that is what we as parents are to do. It's their choice if they're going to follow Christ or not, but you don't know if the rapture happens that they're going to get saved in the tribulation. Remember what mom had said. Now, you don't want your children to go through that. I totally understand that. And I would feel awful if that was one of my kids that had to go through the tribulation. But we're going to be in heaven, first of all. And maybe God's going to use that to get them. So just keep praying for them. <clears throat> and we have until our final breath to accept Christ. And you never know. Something may happen and your child at the very end may give their life to Christ. You don't know. So just keep praying for them and have the assurance that you are doing what you are called to do, which is you raise them up and you are still continuing to pray for them. Well, and ultimately, 
I, I kind of mention this occasionally that God loves them more than you do. As much as you love them, he loves them in a greater way than you do. And we're told that it's not God's will that any should perish. So you just have to be, you just have to trust. I mean, obviously you have to, you want to pray for them and help them in any way you can, but ultimately you have to trust that God is sovereign and he's able to do that. And that's why the prayer is the best thing you can do. Yep. Guys, our cookbooks are on sale 50% for the ebooks, 35% for the print books right now for our spring into saving sale, including our undated planner. You can get organized. If you watch yesterday's show, this will help you get organized and stay on track with our chore, um, with our chore chart to help you keep your house under control. Please visit us at livingonadime.com. Have a good night and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.